Hi, we have already seen the most relevant aspects of the administrative management to taxation, so we will now focus on some specific element, uh, elements of the profession in Spain. In this unit, we will see an introduction of taxation, the definition of taxes, the different types found and the difference between legal and natural person, the definitions of the different types of taxes found in Spain, taxation according to fiscal figure, differences between freelancers and companies, a summary of the taxes for freelancers and societies, and finally, you will have some activities. So let's now see what taxes are. According to Jones et al., taxes can be defined as certain payments that are mandatory for citizens in order to support the cost of government. Unlike fines or penalties, taxes are not intended to deter or punish unacceptable behavior. Besides, taxes differ from individual fees because the payment of a tax does not entitle the payer to a specific good or service in return. We can differentiate two types of taxes. Depending on the base, we can have indirect taxes, those apply to goods and services that affect indirectly individuals, such as valued added tax, or direct taxes, those levy directly on individuals or companies. For instance, income tax, corporate tax, inheritance and donation tax, and wealth tax. Depending on the rate base, we may have proportional taxes. The higher the base, the higher the applicable tax. Progressive taxes, the same tax rate is levied on every individual regardless of the income or wealth. And regressive taxes, when low-income individuals pay a higher charge of taxes in comparison to high-income earners. When it comes to the difference between natural person and legal person, Quintana Adriano defines natural person as any individual that is innately able to exercise their rights and obligations. This means that if a natural person set as a company, they must assume all obligations and liability with their assets. On the contrary, the author refers to legal person as to entities with legal personhood. Thus, a legal person relates to a company or entity being considered as such all those companies that carry out an economic activity. Both types of entities have similarities such as the responsibility for obligation and rights, but also differences like the liability, the initial capital invested, rights and functioning. In Spain, depending on the fiscal figures, the following taxes are paid. IRPF, or Impuesto sobre la Renta de las Personas Físicas, is a direct and progressive tax that is levied on the income obtained by resident individuals taking into consideration their personal and family circumstances. IVA, Impuesto de Valor Añadido, or Valued Added Tax in English, it is an indirect and proportional tax that is levied on the final consumers. That is to say, vendors are not affected by this tax. Instead, they must charge it to clients when providing their services. IS, Impuesto de Sociedades or Corporate Tax, is a direct and progressive tribute levied on all societies and entities established as public limited company, Sociedad Anónima, limited company, Sociedad Limitada, or cooperative company, Sociedad Cooperativa, among many others. EI, Trade Income Tax or Impuesto sobre Actividades Económicas, is a direct and progressive tribute that is exclusively levied on companies established as societies. During the first two years, societies are exempted from payment, but in the third year of activity, societies are obliged to pay as long as their economic activity reaches 1 million euros a year. Here we present a quick overview of all these taxes and how they apply to the different fiscal figures. Before starting the activity, translators must register with the tax authority by filling forms 036 and 037 and selecting one heading of EI. Regarding the taxes for freelancers, we can find 
IVA retention of January 21%, depending on the country of tax residence of the clients and the types of translation service. And IRBF, a retention of the 7% during the first three years if no professional activity has already been registered. After this period of bonus, it is a 15%. The IRBF will also depend on the country of tax residence of the clients. As we can see in the following table, when it comes to taxation for freelancers in the Peninsula and Baleari Island, if the client is a company or other self-employed professional, IRPF and IVA must be applied. However, if the client is a private individual, IVA is applied but IRPF isn't. In the Canary Islands, Ceuta and Melilla, if the client is a company or other self-employed professional, IRPF must be applied whereas IVA is not applied. But if the client is a private individual, IVA is applied and IRPF isn't. In the case of other members of the, UA, the European Union registered with ROI and international exports are exempt from paying the IRPF and IVA. However, for those that are not registered, IVA must be applied. Finally, outside the European Union, any type of client is exempted from being applied IVA or IRPF. Besides, the following declarations and forms must be filed by freelancers. The quarterly VAT return form 303 must be filed up to the 20th of April, July and October and up to the 30th of January. The quarterly personal income tax return IRPF up to the 20th of April, July and October and up to the 30th of January. The quarterly declaration of retentions and payments on account due by the 20th of January, April, July and October. The annual summary declaration which must be filed in January. The annual declaration of transaction with third parties to be filed on Form 347 from 1 to 28th February. And the annual personal income tax return, IRPF, to be filed using Form D100 from the 2nd of May to the 30th of June. In the language industry, and more specifically in the scope of translation and interpreting, the most common enterprises found are private limited liability companies, public limited liability companies, civil societies and corporates. As seen in the graphic, all of them must pay direct taxes as IS, EI and IRPF and indirect taxes such as IVA. I hope you enjoy this unit. You can complete this introduction with the materials available in the platform. See you in the next video.